From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Daryl Clark. Stephanie Woodard has the evening off. Tuesday morning, Alaska State Troopers responded to a home on Dolly Varden Drive where a stolen vehicle was reportedly parked. A man drove off in the vehicle and the troopers pursued it to a short distance before it went into the ditch. Now the driver fled on foot and the special emergency reaction team responded to a fiveplex he was believed to be hiding in. Officers attempted to contact the man for several hours before entering the building and finding he wasn't there. Police say he has been identified as 28-year-old Ryan Portluck of Anchorage. Anyone with information about Portluck's whereabouts is asked to call troopers at 451-5100. A Manly Hot Springs man has been indicted by a Fairbanks grand jury accused of holding a woman captive for weeks. 37-year-old Daniel Selovich was indicted on charges of sexual assault and multiple counts of assault. Selovich reportedly picked the woman up from the airport in early October and held her hostage at a remote cabin where he continuously beat and raped her. The victim was able to message a Facebook contact and ask she send a medivac. Both the victim and Selovich were picked up by a Fort Wainwright helicopter and taken to Fairbanks Memorial Hospital. Selovich was arrested after the woman told troopers what had happened. Selovich will be arraigned in Fairbanks Superior Court next week. A Fairbanks man previously convicted of over 20 counts of sexual abuse of a minor appeared this afternoon in Superior Court. Timothy Bedwell has been in custody after being sentenced to serve over 70 years. Bedwell was charged for sexually assaulting two children over a six-year period of time beginning in 2003. Today, a hearing was scheduled in front of Judge Bethany Harbison after Bedwell filed an appeal and asked to represent himself during the proceedings. That motion was quickly denied after Bedwell read incoherent statements to the judge repeatedly. Harbison abruptly ended the hearing and found Bedwell unfit to represent himself. So, um, Mr. Bedwell, can you just tell me in a, in a few words what you mean Object by that? Objection, Your Honor. I am not that person. I am the beneficiary. To address me as such is fraud. Anything other than that is fraud. Would you prefer I refer to you as beneficiary? Absolutely. Beneficiary, is it your desire to represent yourself on appeal? I don't understand. With the arrival of cold temperatures to the interior, more folks are using their wood stoves, pellet stoves, and fireplaces. This opens the door to a potential hazard. Here's Mike Schultz with more. Ah, it's so nice to be able to enjoy the warmth and beauty of a roaring fire from your wood stove, pellet stove, or fireplace. That is, until this becomes this. Every year during the winter, chimney fires destroy homes in the interior. The Fairbanks Fire Department says it's hard to detect a fire. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times uh, the start of a chimney fire goes undetected because it's inside of a closed area. Uh, but once the chimney, the creosote inside the chimney starts burning, uh, if you're at home, you can go over there and you normally can hear it. It sounds like a, a train you know, rumbling uh, normally the pipes will start glowing red inside the house and that tells you that you have a, a significant problem. Um, and, and so people need to be aware of those things there, shut the damper down, call the fire department, you know, so we can come out and take care of it. Uh, and we've had some cases where people were sitting in their living room watching TV, had a nice fire going in the fireplace and they happened to look out the window and they seen sparks coming down and, or somebody banged on the door and says, hey, you know, your, your roof is on fire. Because we don't have detection, there, there is really no way of doing it. So taking that preventative measure to make sure that uh, our chimneys are cleaned and maintained solves those problems. One local veteran says proper installation and correct usage of the burning devices will prevent accidents from happening. I think the most important thing to understand is, you know, you can get a chimney fire in many different situations. Uh, you can get chimney fire in pellet stoves, you can get chimney fires in boilers. If the chimney is installed properly, you might ruin the chimney, but you're not going to burn the house down. I mean, they're tested, they, they handle those kind of temperatures as far as the structure fire. Um, so obviously you need to keep up on your maintenance, but if something ever happens, proper installation will keep you from burning, the, you won't get a structure fire. 
Tomorrow night, we'll show you what is involved with having your chimney, wood stove, and fireplace cleaned. Mike Schultz reporting. When we come back this weekend, a once former North Pole High School musician will return to the interior this weekend with a popular country music group. Also, it's time once again for another great recipe from Lisa with Fairbanks Flavor. Tonight, she will teach us how to make a bread salad. Stay with us. And welcome back. A hometown success will be performing this weekend at the Moose Family Center. Sarah Dabowski has the story. And she'll be ready to move on. And one day she'll find a man. The Stephen Cochran Project is a country music group based out of Nashville. The band is touring the U.S. performing benefit concerts. All proceeds from this weekend's show go in support of American Legion Auxiliary Unit 57 in Fairbanks. While the band lives in Tennessee and tours nationwide, its lead guitarist grew up right here in the interior. Matt C. graduated from North Pole High School in 2000 and is excited to perform in front of family and friends. We've kind of been doing this thing this, uh, this year. We, we call it a Stories Behind the Music Tour. And uh, we just do this acoustic format show and talk about the songs that we're playing and or what they're about. A lot of the stuff we do is oriented towards bringing attention to U.S. veterans. The lead singer, Stephen Cochran, is a U.S. combat Marine veteran whose songwriting reflects his life and military experience. He served over in Afghanistan, and while he was over there, he got injured, and he was paralyzed from the waist down. He, he came back to the United States, and they did a surgery, and he was able to walk again after the surgery but he suffered from PTSD really bad. He decided to take and put his music to work. He does a lot of music uh, towards, like directed towards veterans. So all of the proceeds will go to our local veterans here in Fairbanks. Be sure to get tickets early and support a hometown musician and local veterans. The show will be this Saturday and doors open at six. Sarah Dabowski reporting. That's Interior Tainment, brought to you by Midnight Sun Family Medicine. A group of beauty salon owners and stylists across the country have committed to donating much-needed hair replacement and styling services to women undergoing treatment for cancer. Celebrity stylist Martino Cartier was inspired by Friends Triumph over cancer and started the program. One of those involved in the project is the S Salon in Fairbanks. Tomorrow they will be holding a third Friday event to raise money for the project. It runs from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Salon at 9th and Cushman. 30% of all the art sold goes directly to Wigs and Wishes, which is really awesome because first the dollar goes to making a terminally ill kid's wish come true, and then we get a credit for a dollar for a wig to provide for somebody in our community. So one dollar actually turns into two. It's time once again to join Lisa Gambardella for another edition of Fairbanks Flavor. She's going to show us a delicious bread salad recipe. Hello and welcome to Gambardella's Pasta Bella downtown. I'm Lisa Gambardella and this is Fairbanks Flavor. Today we're making a delicious treat from the Tuscany region of Italy. It's called panzanella or bread salad. We're going to take all these beautiful ingredients and cut them into very large chunks. So you make them, make them nice and big and make them all about the same size. Once you have all of those cut, put them in a bowl. And this is a great way to use your leftover Gambardella's Italian bread. Put these chunks in a bowl, like so. And now for my secret recipe ingredient is our homemade dressings, which we sell at Gambardella's. This is a balsamic vinaigrette, and I'm mixing it with some of our homemade Italian dressing. Oh, doesn't that look great? And you know what? This dish is really good with a wine from that region that you're all familiar with, and that is a Chianti or Sangiovese. Let this sit for about an hour in the fridge, and you have a beautiful panzanella bread salad. See our recipes at webcenter11.com. Brought to you by Gambardella's Pasta Bella. Definitely not for a low-carb diet, but good otherwise. All right, Joe Cook is coming up next with all your local sports action. Stay tuned. Welcome back in Tier Alaska. Joe Cook here once again with your local Thursday sports cast. This weekend's Ice Dog Series is the last home series of 2015 for the local junior hockey team. Fairbanks will look to right the ship after suffering their first pair of losses at home 
against the Janesville Jets last week. The Cooley Region Chill come to town this weekend for a Midwest Division Series. The Chill come in with a 7-10 record. They're led by goalie Hunter Vorva, whose 93% saving percentage is second in the league. Former Ice Dog Caleb Scheuer is also on the Chill team. The Ice Dogs are 16-4-1, and this series will be critical to help them keep their top-ranked NAHL record intact. After this, the Ice Dogs will be on the road for an 11-game road trip. They won't return to the Dipper until January 15, 2016 against the Springfield Junior Blues. Game 1 of the Chill Series is at 7.30 Friday night at the Dipper. This weekend, the Alaska men's basketball team will be in Anchorage for the AT&T Jamboree. The Nanooks are fresh off their GNAC Pac West crossover tournament title. They'll come into the Jamboree with a 2-0 record. On Friday, UAF faces California State Dominguez Hills and wrap up the tourney with Life Pacific College on Saturday afternoon. Alaska has a lot of momentum going into the tournament. They put the ball in the hole, scoring 208 points in their first two games. This weekend, head coach McDurham wants to see how well his team can play defense for back-to-back -back games. Our defense needs to progress. Um, we want to, you know, have teams shoot under, you know, right around the low 40s if we can. Uh, we're still trying to figure out, you know, where we need to be. But, uh, but no, we have to play good defense. We're playing a, a penetrating team Friday night, so that'll be critical that we, we come together defensively. The chemistry is coming to well because we know how each person is playing. We know how to play with each other, and we're learning our roles. And, uh, you know, it's flowing. So each game, it feels like, in each practice, it feels like we're just becoming a better team. And the UAF women's basketball team is in Hawaii this week, which you could trade places with them, right? The Nooks rallied from a 10-point deficit in the fourth quarter to tie BYU-Hawaii with three minutes left, but the Seasiders held off the Nanooks to win 71-76. Jishan Q had a game-high 25 points in 19 minutes for the Seasiders. Autumn Childress led the charge for Alaska with the team-high 14 points. Kaylee Jold had a double-double with 11 points. 11 points and 10 boards. UAF will take on Chaminade tonight. And today at the Big Dipper, the West Valley Wolfpack hockey team had their first home game of the season. The 4-0 Wolfpack went up against the visiting South Anchorage Wolverines. West Valley beat South 7-0 in the season opener. We picked this up in the second period with Daniel Ramsey and Connor Oregles for South. They broke a 1-1 tie with those tallies. But Yanni Saramanolis, he scored on a power play to bring West Valley within one going into the third period, 2-3 game in favor of South. The Wolverines, they went back up two with Peyton McSherry's goal in the physical third period. Gabe Rankin and Stasi Skorowski link up for the second time. This goal made it a 3-4 game. Rankin scored twice for the pack. All of West Valley's scores were on the power play, and they had a two-man advantage in the final minute after a South penalty. But West Valley shots never went in. South gets payback and hands West Valley their first loss in a 4-3 final. Yeah, for sure. We didn't want to lose again to them. I mean, getting the roadie to Fairbanks was fun, so we thought we'd just leave it all out there today. In practice, we've been working on our PK a lot, so we were kind of confident about it, but it's a little scary. It always is. And I don't think we had that uh, urgency till it was the end of the game, and I wish we'd have had that throughout the game. It was, you know, it took the last five, six minutes to realize, oh, we're going to lose this game if we don't do something. So I think we need to play a little heavier and get, get to the net and, uh, and play big, bigger than we are. And lastly, a local fighter made his case to maybe one day compete in the UFC. Check out this video from Cody Wareham's Facebook page. She captured Colin Reuter of Fairbanks submitting Chris Bennett at AFC 118 on Wednesday night. Reuter retains his welterweight title with the win. This almost didn't happen because Reuter had car trouble while driving down to Anchorage on Tuesday. And unfortunately, interior fighters couldn't get the sweep as Jarrell Askew lost a 25-minute battle in the main event to Nick Novelli. Congrats to Reuter. We'll wait to hear if he gets picked up by the UFC after his win at AFC 118. Speaking of fighting, this Saturday night, Sala is a Rock Fighting Championships 10 will be at the Carlson Center. Doors open at 6 and fights start at 7.30. Julian Hurricane Harris will take on Anthony Diablo Pacho in the main event. And that's a wrap for sports tonight. Thanks for watching. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time. Hey, welcome back to our Thursday night newscast. Mike Schultz is once again talking about the weather, and today it get, uh, started off pretty darn cold. In fact, our overnight low was 27 below. 
but it warmed up to two degrees above, and we're looking at temperatures continue warming throughout the night and even warmer tomorrow. We'll tell you more about that in just a little bit. Photograph night, a very interesting one sent in by Roy Machaney. An interesting noon photo. You can see the sun right there, and then again, some, some really uh, iced over uh, pieces of grass there, and a good shot to, at the level there. And again, as always, if you have a photograph to share, send it to photos at ktvf11.com. And speaking of our photos, of course, our Fab Photo calendar is out. And it's uh, being picked up uh, pretty quickly. People are really grabbing that thing uh, all of the, the uh, different areas around town, like Miguel's, and uh, we have also Seekins Ford, and then the Fudge Pop. You can get them all different places. Go to our website, webcenter11.com, and check the uh, lifestyle section, and they are free. How about that? Here's your numbers. Today's high, like I said, 2 degrees. The overnight low, 27 below. Record high, 47, 1949, 36 below in 2011. The sunrise and sunset, 5 hours and 52 minutes, a loss of 6 minutes from yesterday. Our satellite radar is really looking pretty impressive tonight. We have a monster storm we've been talking about the last couple of days. Moving ashore, the frontal system associated with it, already moving lots of snow into the, uh, to, to the area to the south of the Alaska Range, and it's moving up our direction. And most of this will be moving in by tomorrow, the way it looks right now. What else is going on across the state? Well, over southeast Alaska, you're getting a little bit of reprieve from all the heavy snow they have. Now they have rain problems in the forecast. It is raining at Ketchikan, 36 degrees there. A few snow showers at Juneau. Over the Anchorage Bowl, it's warmed up considerably from what it was yesterday, 14 degrees. Rain falling around the Kodiak region, cloudy skies along the Aleutian chain. Temperatures warming up on the west coast. They were single digits uh, yesterday, and over the north slope, uh, north of Brooks Range, still the cold air trapped there, 20 below at Barrow, and Fort Yukon at 15 degrees below zero. Lower 48 weather, well, the storm system that was moving across the uh, northern plains, uh, bringing all that heavy snow and wind and everything else, is trying to move into Canada, but it's really slowed down quite a bit. And the new system moving across the northern Rockies, and we have another system moving uh, with a frontal boundary tied into that area of low pressure. Uh, way up to the north, just draped right along the east coast, bringing lots of rain there. Okay, it's time once again for our kids' weather. And uh, first of all, we'll go real quickly to the jet stream. As you can see, it'll be dipping down over the weekend, uh, bringing cold temperatures to the northern plains, and then more showers and thunderstorms. Now we'll go to the kids' weather. And, of course, this week we've been talking with the kids from Nordale Elementary School, but the teacher tonight has an interesting weather fact about Valdez. Hello, my name is Miss Harvey, and this is our fifth, sixth grade class here at Nordale Elementary School. And we've got a weather fact to share with you. Class, did you know that Valdez, Alaska gets more snow on average than any other city in the United States? Wow. <laughs> more than 324 inches or 27 feet usually falls during the winter. And they have gotten close to couple feet of snow in the last couple of days. Thanks to Mount McKinley Bank for uh, sponsoring our kids' weather each night. And uh, the week after Thanksgiving, we'll be back with uh, visiting with the kids from North Pole Elementary School. Real quickly, our forecast for the northern sections tomorrow, mostly cloudy at Barrow, periods of snow in Nome, a couple of inches of snow expected at Fort Yukon. Here in the interior, the key word is warmer temperatures. Winds diminishing also for Healy and Delta Junction by evening, then some scattered snow showers in the Fairbanks area. Over southeast Alaska, it looks like heavy rain for Juneau and also at Ketchikan. While over the uh, south, or out to the west we go, and looking at rain, rainy periods for Cold Bay, snow showers at Bethel, and rain and wind in Kodiak. And down over the uh, south central sections, looking at rain and snow scattered across the entire region. So, as far as our updates on our road conditions for a Thursday night, uh, let's see. There we are. The Dalton Elliott Highway, heavy snow on da uh, Dalton Highway, reduced visibilities. Keep that in mind. Over the Steeson Richardson Highway, blowing snow. It's been blowing all day long. Icy patches, snow on the road. And down across the uh, Parks Highway, also some drifting snow there. Snow on the road, icy patches, heavy snow near Talkeetna. Keep that in mind if you're heading down on the Parks Highway. And our forecast for tonight, 5 degrees above. How about that? Warmer, uh, cloudy with a slight chance of snow after midnight. Tomorrow's forecast, scattered snow showers and considerably warmer. It'll actually be right around 20 degrees. For some reason they didn't go on the computer, but it'll be around 20 degrees for the high. Now the five-day outlook, snow is expected to continue on Saturday and into Sunday with maybe about 3 or 4 inches possible by Sunday. We're also looking at temperatures continuing quite mild. And then as you head for the rest of the week toward Thanksgiving holiday, as you can see, temperatures above zero in the teens above zero. 
overnight lows right around zero to five below. So pretty good after all these cold temperatures we've been going through. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Great. That's, that looks Great. like a perfect, perfect forecast. Thank you, Mike. That will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, the ringleader of the Paris terror attacks was confirmed dead today after yesterday's police raid. That's up next with Lester Holt. And don't forget this Saturday at 7 p.m., we will be airing an exclusive interview with the man at the center of the Fairbanks 4 case, Bill Holmes. Stephanie was able to sit down with Holmes for the first time ever on camera back in October. She takes a look at the case and his double murder conviction only on KTVF Channel 11, Saturday at 7 o'clock. All right, from all of us here at the News Center, have a great night. Good night.